Today we're going to talk about static stretching, sometimes called passive static stretching. So first we're going to get into what is it, what are the benefits, when should we use it, and why I like to use it at times. What is static stretching? You can think of static stretching as simply holding a certain range of motion and relaxing into the stretch. The muscular activation is very minimal. The movement is also very minimal beyond getting deeper into the stretch. And we use certain forces to get deeper, whether that be gravity or a towel or using our hands to pull into the direction. So an example of a static stretch would be if I put the legs up here, I grab forward, I'm gonna use both gravity and my hands to pull into here, I can breathe out and get deep into the stretch, and I hold here. This would be an example of static stretching. What is it good for? I am not a fan of static stretching for improvements in usable range of motion. Why? Passive stretching does not use strength. It does not help you move in or out of the range of motion. It simply develops that range of motion passively where you need to warm up in order to use it. So if you want to see the way that I like to create mobility, you can watch the mobility series on this channel. I will put it in the I button up above. You can click that and get an idea of what exercises I like and maybe what I don't like. So if passive stretching is not good for usable range of motion increases, then what is it good for? Well, right now it is almost 9 p.m. where I am. We can see um, it's pitch black outside. So at the end of the day, when you are ready, getting ready to go to bed, we can sometimes feel still very energetic or um, we're trying to calm down and it's a bit difficult. Passive stretching can actually help this. Why? Well, to answer this question, we need to understand two different types of nervous systems. We have the parasympathetic nervous system and we have the sympathetic nervous system. So these also have nicknames. The parasympathetic is called the rest and digest and the sympathetic is called the fight or flight. So why are they called these nervous systems and why does this play into passive stretching? Well, number one, they are called rest and di digest and fight or flight because this is what they prepare you to do. So for example, the sympathetic nervous system is nicknamed fight or flight because it prepares you to either fight or to run. In the sympathetic nervous system, you would start to have dilated eyes, dilated blood vessels, your heart rate would increase, you'd get sweaty palms, because you are ready to either fight or leave. So if I give you an example of you are at a restaurant and you see a man stand up right next to you and point a gun at you, what's going to happen physiologically with your body, okay? You're going to increase in heart rate, you're going to get sweaty palms, you're going to be ready to either run or to fight. This is the sympathetic nervous system activating. Then on the other side, we have the parasympathetic nervous system. Now this is polar opposite, where the blood vessels constrict, the eyes constrict, the heart rate slows down, digestion is improved. So this we can think of as if we're laying in bed, pitch black, very calm, maybe waterfall noises, okay, very relaxed, heartbeat comes down, okay, we're, we're ready to go to sleep. This is the parasympathetic nervous system. Now studies have shown that passive stretching activates the parasympathetic nervous system. So if we relax into stretch, we can actually lower the heart rate, we can start to constrict the blood vessels, promote digestion, get ready to relax. So I love to do this at the end of the day, and this might also be a reason why you wouldn't want to static stretch before getting into strength or hand balancing. Why would you want to go to the parasympathetic before you are going to go to the sympathetic? It doesn't really make sense. But at night, when you're ready to go to bed, this is an excellent way to kind of rest the body down, so if you're having trouble sleeping, this is one thing that you can add in to help sleep at night. Now, I don't have a specific routine that I do every night, but I do spend about five to 15 minutes just stretching, and it really helps me to go to sleep. So I'm gonna show you a few of the stretches that I use. They're very basic, you probably learned them in PE class. For these stretches, I hold for 30 seconds to 60 seconds. I don't set a timer, I don't do amount of sets, it's very free, so maybe some are less than 30 seconds, maybe some are more than 60 seconds, but I'm just relaxing into the stretch. So let's go through some of the stretches that I might use. Now these are just some examples of some of the stretches that I might do. Sometimes I do a bit more, sometimes I do a bit less. 
It's not structured at all, it's just trying to relax my body after a big day of movement. It's important to note that I didn't develop any of this range of motion doing passive stretching. I never did. The range of motion I have passively, for example this, came automatically from doing loaded stretching that I recommend in my mobility series. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments down below and I hope you use this in your daily life to relax after a long day of work. That's the session. Oh